So it's valuing the voice, respecting the language, developing real curiosity about who is this person and getting to know them, uh, becoming the apprentice, realizing the person is the world's expert on their own life. Uh, it's about the, the untapped uh, wisdom that's actually in us all that needs to be drawn out. It's knowing that change is constant. And here's one some people laugh at, it's called using the available toolkit. Now, um, as I was watching the, the Jack interview, I was wondering, I was curious about his motorcycle. How for some reason, despite the fact he was being targeted by radiation, he was able to enjoy uh, uh, cleaning his motorcycle and going out on a trip. And um, so perhaps this is one of Jack's tool, it, this is in Jack's toolkit, isn't it, his, his motorcycle? Mm -hmm. And perhaps we just should discuss that a little bit, if, the, if that, un, is that sort of, help you understand a bit more what the, the toolkit means, it's your toolkit, mm -hmm. it, it's not the title model or anything like that. I think that my answer relates to knowing that change is constant bit, where you have to, sometimes it's what I've found, to be reminded about how you, um, what you've actually got in your favour, you know, amidst, amidst all the chaos of distress or what have you. And um, he has found a very th a therapeutic way for his well-being with, with his um, love of bikes. Um, and just to have to have that pointed out, though, to him, I think, <coughs> is really useful. Yeah, in effect, he's been reminded of his passions in life. And... Uh, I think part of being well is actually having passions and, and, and doing them. And I think when you do get ill, you do drop things which actually turn you on and make life real, mm -hmm. almost real. I think it's much better to see it in that way. I must admit, I find the phrase personal toolkit intensely irritating, but that's no doubt me. <laughs> It's about reminding people of their strengths. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure okay. Paul's right. People do lose touch with some of their really quite, you know, positive interests and th things they've, they've accomplished. And it's about trying to remind people and then hopefully, if they're interested, reconnect them to some of those interests and experiences and strengths. It's almost as if there are two worlds. I've often thought this. There's the reality of the real world which we're hopefully in and hopefully enjoying and then there's this awful other world and you sort of have a foot in each camp <laughs> and what you have to do is to try and sort of withdraw from this awful nightmare and try and find something positive in the real world and also um, when I was in hospital um, for a long time um, I didn't do anything at all I just sat on my bed completely silent all day and I do actually play the violin. The violin is very, very important to me. Nobody ever suggested it was brought in for me to look at. Nobody ever suggested there might be a room down the corridor where I could play it. Nobody ever thought of what I might like to do. I was just left doing absolutely nothing. And it's not surprising it took me years to get out of the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I know you may not like the term toolkit. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, We've all got one, and um, mm. we may not admit to it, but it's like you said about playing your violin. Um, I went through a period of not setting aside time for fun at one time, because I didn't think it was that important, because people were always having a go at me that I was always too smiley and too happy, so why do I need to set aside time for fun? But looking at my recovery, if it wasn't for the fact that I did set aside in my toolkit time for fun, I don't think my recovery would have moved on the way it had done. Because unless you just have time where you say, right, this is my silly hour or silly two hours or whatever time you want to put on it, and I'm going to do this in this time, something utterly outrageous, I think that's the only way to do it. And that is a form of toolkit. Put inside time for fun. Enjoy them. Could, could I say that one thing that people have considered to be a barrier with the title model or one of its weaknesses is this issue of language. Uh, some language that appeals to people turns other people off. Absolutely. And um, I'm thinking like the, the wave, the ebb and flow, using metaphors has really got some people excited and it just completely turns other people off because they want something more scientific and crisp. Like shipwreck. Or, yeah, common, that's or, right. or, or common use of language. You know? yes. Sometimes yes. I don't think you need, I mean not a 
the older I get, the more concrete-minded I get. Yeah. And the more I think some things which are actually quite simple are described in complicated terms and, yeah. and I've never liked it that much. Some things are very complicated and need complicated mm -hmm. terms but most of the world isn't like that mm -hmm. yeah. and I think it's it just mystifies some stuff which is eminently sensible and I do understand some people that get turned off by the metaphors because the problem with metaphors, once you go to metaphors then the, the temptation always to extend it and to push the boundaries yeah. you know <laughs> Canoes and corridors and tar and it, it does my head into it. <laughs> but that's the way I am. But mm. um, I don't think it's needed, and I think it's it's actually hopefully for those of us who find those terms really difficult, seeing through that and saying there is something really useful and essential for mental health services in what's being said. Simple, but incredibly <laughs> difficult. Yeah. And respecting the language that's coming from that individual dealing with at that particular time. And trying to speak in their terms rather than anyone else's. Yeah.